Hello and welcome to my channel, my name is Nico Perez and today we're going to talk about Jump Force. Jump Force was a 3D anime arena fighter that was released back in 2019. The game was hyped up as the ultimate anime crossover. And with the rise of otaku culture, it should have been a massive success. Except... It wasn't. The characters were so unbalanced, the gameplay was so repetitive, it had way too many bugs than a, well... A bug's nest and that's only a small piece of the massive amount of flaws that the game had jump force was an absolute disaster that only lasted three years before the servers were shut down and physical copies for the game ended up having to get pulled out of retailers don't get me wrong the idea is great but the way that it was executed was absolutely terrible but what would happen if it was released with a bit more effort what would happen if the studio decided to try again and remake the game, except this time they would take a completely different route. What if Jump Force ended up getting a second chance? I know it's a lot to ask for, but hypothetically, if it was released again, here are my ideas as to how I personally would remake Jump Force. One of the obvious things that should be added is crossplay and rollback netcode. This should be a no brainer as it's pretty much going to keep the online fan base alive. And before we get started, if you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like and also subscribe to my channel and turn on those post notifications so that you never miss out on a video or a live stream. And if you would like to support the channel even further, check out buymeacoffee.com slash enigma. The link for everything will be down in the description box below. And without further ado, let's get started. Starting things off, we're going to talk about fixing something that I know a lot of players don't really look into as much, but it's something that is very important, in my opinion at least, and that is the campaign. Now, I honestly feel like the campaign for Jump Force, it would function something kind of like a Crisis on Infinite Earths event. For those who don't know what Crisis on Infinite Earths is, it was a really big comic book that completely shook the entire DC universe to its core. It was a good way to fix a lot of issues that were inside of the continuity at the time and i feel like something similar to that could happen inside of jump force obviously it's not going to be a canon thing but it would be a pretty good way to explain how all of these characters are able to come together in one game if i had it my way i would pick the three main villains from each of the main series that are used in the game which are dragon ball z one piece and naruto and i would have them come together to shatter reality causing every single character to come together now i'm not a writer so i'm not going to try any further with a plot but if anybody wants to try to write one please do also one more thing involving the campaign i would not have a custom character involved at all as cool as it would be to have your own character your own playable character i honestly think that it would be a better idea if we were to take the three main series as well as all of the other characters that are going to be involved and have the story revolve around them, therefore giving them a lot more screen time as well as a lot more depth to their characters. As for animating the campaign, well, I don't think like it should be animated at all. Instead, it could function similar to a visual novel or kind of like if you're reading a manga. Not only is that going to cut back on resources, but it will also give more time to develop something that is more important, which is the actual game itself. As for the graphics involving the game, I would ditch the 3D art style and stick with a 2D art style. And instead of the dark graphics that we got in the first Jump Force, it would be more vibrant and colorful. Some good examples of this are games like Dragon Ball Fighters, Grand Blue Fantasy Versus, and Melty Blood Type Lumina. The characters themselves are fine, but I honestly wouldn't use the outfits that they ended up getting in the original jump force and instead i would keep their outfits pretty similar to what their quote-unquote first appearances were it's the same thing with the move set i would not add any of the current moves that they have and instead stick with the moves that well they had during their first appearance here's what i mean instead of having goku have a lot of his stuff that he ended up getting in super i would keep the goku from the end of the Dragon Ball Z slash Dragon Ball Kai series. A big drawback to having the characters be at the stages that they currently are 
as of right now, is risking spoilers. I don't know about anybody else, but I personally don't want to explain how the characters got to their current state to my friends who haven't caught up to the current chapters of anything. If I were to do that, I would end up spoiling a lot of stuff and I am not a spoiler. It's better to be safe then sorry. And now for the most important thing in a fighting game, the gameplay. I'm probably gonna get an angry mob for saying this, but forget about teams of three and instead let's stick to 1v1 combat. As cool as it is to see these characters team up, I think it's even cooler to see them throw down. If anything, I feel like if the game really wanted to implement a quote unquote team aspect, what they could do is add an assist function. Kind of like what they use in All-Star Battle R. So you could pick out one character from any series, as well as picking a second character to be your assist. But in my personal opinion, I still think 1v1 without any assist is the way to go. As for the controls, I feel like adding auto combos can work kind of like how they do in Dragon Ball Fighters, in which they're good to start with, but you really shouldn't rely on them. Instead, you should learn how the character plays and how to use their specific combos and motion inputs. In Dragon Ball Fighters, there is a bread and butter combo that functions a lot better than the regular auto combos that you are given. I feel like something along that line would be a really good direction. As for the stages and the environment, I would personally like to have the corners function kind of like how they do in Guilty Gear Strive. And that is once you have somebody in the corner after a specific period of time or after a specific set of attacks, the corners would break. But here's where things would be a little bit interesting. Not only is this going to reset the game, but it can also be a good way to see entirely different areas. For example, there could be a stage in which you're at the World Tournament Arena from Dragon Ball Z. And once the corner is broken, you could end up in either King Kai's Planet or Satan City. But what would make things really cool is that if you were to break the corner using a super move, not only would you be changing your arena, you would be changing your entire dimension. So imagine you were to break the corner using a super move and instead of being in a stage set in Dragon Ball, you're in a stage set in Naruto or One Piece. So you could break the World Tournament Arena stage and you could end up in the Hidden Leaf Village or on Luffy's ship. The possibilities are endless with the amount of characters that are in the game. Obviously, this is only an idea as well as a what if scenario. But if Bandai Namco were to try again and put some thought into the project, as well as take their time in developing the game, the end result could be absolutely amazing. If I had the money to develop this game myself, I would, but I unfortunately do not. But until that day comes, this is nothing but wishful thinking. Anyways, that's going to be it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And as always, this is the San Diego Shooting Star signing out.